Let's talk about faith sharing in worship. This is easy. That's easy. Tell me about that. What does that mean? Well, if you start practicing uh, multiple sets of groups uh, sharing their story about where they've experienced God, uh, if you gather up your leaders of those groups, classes, and teaches the groups that are doing even this book, and you say to them, now I want you to watch for those really great stories. I want you to listen for those really great stories. When people start telling all these stories, I mean, you just said it a minute ago, Christy, that you'll just hear some incredible stories. And some of those stories you're going to hear are so incredible, you would just go, I wish everybody had heard this. I wish everybody. I mean, and we've all had those experiences. We went off on a mission trip, and people came back and said, that was such an awesome experience. we got to tell the whole congregation. And people get up and tell their story about their mission trip and uh, just incredibly moved about their mission trip. So that's this. And so, F, you know, if you've been practicing, you know, your service projects, trying to get beyond just serving to getting their names and starting relationships and and then simultaneously a year later you're starting to practice your story at the church you don't stop doing the other you start practicing your story at the story you're in fact these two may mix wow wouldn't it be something is the stories you start telling were from your service projects because you started actually getting to know people rather than just serving people and that influences this this is where this builds on each other. And then you're going to hear some amazing, incredible God moments. And what, I, what we want folks to do is then say, well, what would it look like if once a month or every six weeks in your worship service, you brought one of those great stories forward and you either had them personally tell it as a testimony. United Methodist Church used to always have testimonies. We think somehow it's the Baptist Church or the Assembly of God Church or some other. Tri we did that. That fact, Francis Asbury rode around on a horse with an extorter with him all the time. There was always somebody, especially a layperson, to give a testimony to what he was saying. Or he was the extorter. Somebody else preached. He gave the testimony. Preaching and testimony in the early days of Methodism went hand in hand. And I don't know when the testimony went away, but maybe... We need to get it back. And this is, well, take some of those incredible stories you've heard and once a month, once every six weeks, and start having that three-minute testimony on Sunday morning. Now, I like to videotape them so people aren't quite so scared and you can, can kind of control the time just as an inside tip. But uh, if you start doing that on Sunday morning, every so often, now you're starting getting a wider audience about telling your faith story in, in non-weird ways. Because no matter if everybody in every group in the whole church started coming to their groups and their committees and their Sunday school classes, their studies, and started to answer the question, tell me about a time you've experienced God, you might get to 50% of your people. Because the other 50% of your people come and worship, and they're not any of that stuff. So you need to begin to have these testimonies. And I like a live testimony if they can control the time on Sunday morning because it gives them practice of telling it. And we're also demonstrating to the whole congregation about sharing your story. And I would also say to pastors, you ought to be having one of these at least every month in your preaching. Where's your story? Where's your experience with God? Because you're the primary example here. Um, don't need it every week, but where's your part of that? Because we need to start teaching a wider group about the question. And so that's really the third chapter is start, in a third, by the third year, these ought to be start compounding. And we ought to start seeing it on Sunday. And we get it to the wider audience about our story and faith sharing. And the culture starts changing then. You know, uh, the culture starts changing, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I would, um, I'd invite you to look at the discussion question. And one of them is, what's stopping your folks? What's stopping your people? What's stopping you from sharing your faith story? What's the stumbling blocks? What's what scares you? What because um, we've all got you know this is kind of frightening. It's kind of revealing to share your story. So what are the stumbling blocks? Sometimes if we identify stumbling blocks for ourselves in a group setting, um, then we can work on them. So what stumbling blocks do you have that you need to overcome and 
in what some way you might learn from some other people how they how they overcame that in Europe.